You ever have those annoying little problems at work where you need to do some tedious tasks that you know could be automated and when you Google search for a solution, there are solutions out there, but they're filled with ads, they're super clunky to use and they don't really work. So you end up manually doing it over and over again just to get it done. Well, I had one of those problems recently. My job, or at least part of my job, is to make thumbnails for Theo. And something I like doing is adding in this little icon effect where we'll take the Stripe logo, a square, round the corners, and group them together to make these nice little collages that I think look really good for thumbnails. But doing this manually is kind of a pain because you have to make the rectangle, center the rectangle, bring in the SVG, center the SVG, line them up, round the corners, group them up, and then you're done. That's like two to three minutes of just annoyance, which I realized I could automate away by making a program for it myself. This is quick SVG background. It's something I threw together in probably like four to six hours ish. Um, I built this like a week or two ago, but um, basically the way it works is I can go in here to SVGL, which is easily one of the most useful extensions. If you do any developer creator work type things, uh, you could go in here. We'll grab like the Microsoft logo. I can paste this in to add in this icon. We'll give it a white background, uh, maybe decrease the border radius a little bit, make the image a little bit smaller, copy our SVG, jump back into Affinity, which is in my opinion, by far and away the best like photo editor thing. If you do thumbnails and creative work, this is 10,000 times better than Photoshop. It just works. It's a one-time payment, highly recommend it. But now if I went back in here, I can just paste this in and I have my icon. I'll group these two together. Uh, we'll give this like a background here, make that black and there you go. I literally used this exact thing in a thumbnail I made for Theo like yesterday. You can see I literally used this for this video's thumbnail to make those two logos for OpenAI and Microsoft. In order to build this, I used my favorite web framework, Svelte. Like I said at the start of this video, I built this project in about probably like six hours total. The first working version was really easy to do. Uh, I made it, I was happy with it, I sent it to Theo, and then he's like, hey, can you add in the Squircle functionality? Because if you look at this carefully, you'll see that the rounding on this isn't normal corner rounding, like what you would do by setting the border radius in HTML or CSS. Uh, it's actually like a more complicated, like smoothing rounding thing, and this is actually what Apple uses to get their really nice app icons. So I ended up having to implement that, which was a huge pain in the ass because, well, I didn't end up actually implementing the math for a Squarkle because that's weird and I didn't feel like doing it. There was a package that already existed that I could use to do it called um, Figma Squarkle, which was super useful. But that meant that I had to do a lot more custom SVG manipulation, which meant that I brought out one of my favorite libraries, D3. D3 is one of those libraries that is very high skill floor. It's hard to get into and hard to use, but the AIs these days make it a lot easier to use. I already have some experience with D3 and I do think that there's a conversation to be had here with these like quick internal tool type things that you can build of like the vibe coding and using an LLM to actually build it for you. I had the LLM build a ton of this project. I think I made a video last year where I was talking about like some of the tech I want to learn and things I want to get into. And one of them has been NeoVim. I've wanted to work on and use NeoVim for a really, really long time. I've been using Vim motions for years now. I'm super comfortable with them. I've been hijacking my VS code to be more like NeoVim where I can do like uh, space S and that'll pull up my search. I have some hotkeys to jump between my files. I really like that experience and I wanted to go all the way with it until I tried cursor. I have been completely converted to using cursor these days, their new like agent mode thing. I um, I hate the term agent because it's gotten so diluted and turned just so fucking cringe because that's just what happens with any new technology, the like cringe grifter archetype of person that you see on Twitter. If you're on Twitter at all, you know what I'm talking about will hijack a term and constantly say it. And it gets to the point where when someone says agent, it got to the point where my eyes would just roll into the back of my head because I'm like, okay, they're just making some shit up. But the agent mode in this is really nice because you can give it a prompt. It will read from the file to get more context. It will make some changes. It will then make the change and then run a lint rule over it, which is a tool call, and then go through and just keep going until it gives you a really good answer. Claude is really good at this. And I think the definition of agent that I've kind of settled on and people I respect have settled on is basically just an LLM that has tool calls or can do something more than just spit out text or do some reasoning. Cursor is also really nice because it has the cursor tab. If I went down here and I just 
do nothing. It'll give me this like SVG string thing. And I, um, this makes it so much easier to just crank out code. And it's one of those things where I started out with GitHub Copilot when it released way back in like, I think it was like 2022 or something like that. Really liked it, used it for about six or seven months. And then it got to the point where I didn't like it as much anymore. That was also a time when I was really focused on learning new things. And I do think that these AIs do get in the way of learning if it's just constantly like telling you what to do next. It can be a little annoying and a little over eager. But now that I'm just at the point where I have good fundamentals down, I know what I'm doing and I'm just trying to crank out projects. It's really useful to just have cursor tab go through and just give me answers. And it's surprisingly good. It does things like file imports really well. It figures out what you want for parameters. It adds types really well. It's a really nice addition. I would highly recommend switching your model over here to fast. I think from what I've heard that this is the Super Maven model because Cursor acquired Super Maven and Super Maven was like the best uh, code autocomplete thing. And I think fast is now just Super Maven and it shows it's really fast, works really well. I really, really like it. So I ended up using AI to generate a lot of this project. And I think that AI does make making these little tools super, super easy and quick because there are some things in here that would have been enough friction to where I wouldn't have wanted to bother doing this after work or something where like, um, in the like page dots felt here, which is just the main app. I have this handle global pace thing where like I could have gone through and figured out how to do the like clipboard data stuff and like add an event listener to do all these things to grab my clipboard items, make sure it's an SVG, do all this stuff and save that SVG object to state. But that's just kind of a pain. I, it's not the kind of thing that I'm super interested in learning. I think that's a tricky thing too, is like deciding the things that you really care about learning where like I I've read through all this code and I know how it works. But the LLM was able to just kind of do this for me. I asked cursor where I'm like, hey, can you make it so that whenever a user pastes on the page, it will save that SVG to the state and it worked. It just kind of one shot it for me. Same thing with the file upload, same thing for the create SVG with, uh, with background for downloading it and copying it. All this stuff was mostly generated by the LLM. But there were a lot of things in here that I had to basically write myself. And I do, I am fully in the camp that like, if you don't know how to code, you can get decently far on these LLMs, but you've seen, I'm sure you've probably seen those like Reddit posts of people being like the LLM can't work on my code base anymore because it's gotten too complicated and I have no idea what's going on. And I think you do have to generally know what it's doing and giving it very specific things to work on is a lot better. A great example of this is the display SVG D3 function I wrote, where this is basically the function that handles creating this preview SVG. Wanted to use D3 for this. I already know how D3 works, so I was able to set up a lot of this myself, but I had these three functions I wanted to make. The setup SVG function, which will uh, just create the empty background. So when you load the page, it'll run uh, setup SVG, which just creates this basic black background here. I have this update SVG function, which will change the border radius and background color. I wanted to separate these out because when cursor first gave me the implementation for it, it wanted me to just do everything in one thing. So anytime we change the border radius, it would re-render the inner SVG. It would rebuild the entire SVG from scratch. I know enough about D3 to where I'm like, Hey, I can just store a reference to my current path and just update the piece of the path to make the site more performant for something this simple. And especially if you're running this on like an M series Mac, it doesn't matter. You can carpet bomb your CPU by creating a new SVG every time you change the slider, but I wanted to do it better and I wanted to make it correct ish and knowing how these things actually works allows me to take the LLM a lot further and make much cooler things. So I made this, uh, update SVG. And then finally this set enter SVG function, which again, cursor almost entirely did for me. The trickiest part of this is taking in the new SVG element, mounting it in the middle of the uh, SVG here, and then setting the correct scaled image width because the image width is a percentage. When I paste in the Svelkit logo here, it's not like directly setting a pixel width, it's setting a percentage in the box. So when we have 100%, it'll fill up the box. We set to 10%, it'll get nice and tiny. All of this has to be done dynamically based on the size of the view box, which cursor was able to give me the code for. Again, this is something I could have figured out myself. I know the concepts and how to do all this, these things, but cursor just made it easier to do. And I think that's a really, really cool thing that we now have to where 
the LLMs can just allow good engineers to be more ambitious, make more things, do things quicker, and not have to care about these little annoying, tedious things. CSS is another one of those things where I didn't have to think about it. I wanted to add these little like splotches over here to give it a little more personality, center everything up, make it look decent. And again, cursor one shot it. All of this UI down here, one shotted by cursor. Really, really useful to be able to just do these things. And bringing this all together, I was able to make this nice little project. And like I said, about six hours of work, I got it deployed. I uh, gave it a little domain, quickbg.davis7.sh. The This repo is fully open source. It'll be linked down below. Same thing with this tool. Completely free to use. Don't make any money off of this. It's just a really nice thing that I like using. And if you do any creative work, probably useful for you. And I think that's really cool. I think these LLMs and vibe coding type things are allowing us to make these really nice personal tools that would have been more annoying to make in the past. They're easy to make now. And it kind of gives you this almost personal software thing. It really helps solve the problem that I end up having where if I've got a really big complicated project I'm working on and I'm super deep on it, I can autistically obsess about that for 10 hours a day, just keep grinding on it and it's great. But then when I finish it, I'm just kind of sitting there like, man, I really want something to work on, but I don't know what to work on. And that's resulted in me just kind of building very random, stupid things. I built more to-do apps than I would like to admit, more demo apps than I would like to admit. And I think it's really useful to be able to go in here and make things that you actually need for your workflow. Figuring out what to build is one of those things where the more you do, the more things you have to build. A year ago, before I started working for Theo, before I started doing more of these things, I had a lot of trouble figuring out what the hell I was supposed to work on, what, what I was supposed to do. But now the more I do, the more I make, the more I'm like, holy crap, I need all these things. I want to make a system for doing better uh, LLM queries to a more niche framework like Svelte or uh, Effect or whatever. I have things where I want to make my um, SVG background stuff better. I have stuff working for Theo. A lot of my workflow is getting ads placed and doing stuff there. And there's a really cool project in there where like I could take the finished edit video file that has a timestamp for the ad and the ad and just dynamically put those together with ffmpeg there are so many different things that i can build because i'm doing more stuff this stuff just like snowballs to where you suddenly just have so much work to do that it feels so much better this is something that theo just posted where um, we were working on a thumbnail for a video that just went out and he wanted to add in this little uh, graphic for the thumbnail where this was the uh, Microsoft and OpenAI might be breaking up and they're having internal strife video thing. I forget which model this is using, but the new OpenAI image generation thing where he was able to create this little asset, which we would have had to manually make before. We do a lot of fake tweets, a lot of fake messages, a lot of fake whatevers to make really cool thumbnails. And he was able to just use the LM to create this. And someone commented, you do your thumbnails yourself or have someone that you're going to fire, or if you do do them, will you fire yourself? And this is, I think, one of the uh, things that people get wrong about AI, and Theo put it really well after this, where I was really glad when I saw this and Theo showed me this, my first thought was not, oh God, I'm going to lose my job or whatever. It was like, oh cool, we can make way better thumbnails. And that's what Theo said here. Ben and I split the work for them. We both uh, do a lot of other things. This lets us experiment more. No jobs lost, just higher quality output. And I think that's the point. These LLMs allow you to make higher quality things faster and experiment more in a really, really cool way. They almost supercharge you. They don't replace you, if that makes any sense. It's a uh, I very much become less of an AI doomer and more of a, oh, wow, this can really make my stuff better. Because I was in that camp. I uh, Many months ago, I was definitely in the camp of where, you know, you kind of have that implicit fear of like, oh, God, the AI is going to replace me. Now that I'm doing more and I'm learning more about these things, it's like, no, the AI is going to let me be better and let me do more cool things. So I just wanted to go through, show you guys this thing I built, rant a little bit about uh, all the cool things we can make now. I definitely think this is something worth doing. Uh, if you guys end up making anything cool, definitely put it in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this, make sure you like and subscribe. And until next time, go make more software. It's a lot easier than you think.